All right, well, officially good morning uh, and good afternoon, good evening to all of you, no matter where you're joining. Uh, we're happy that you found us here on uh, the WLHS International Live with Tammy and Eric program for the month of May. And um, Tammy, do you wanna share what the topic is for this year, for this, this occasion? Hi everyone, it's good to see your names. I can't see your faces. Some of you I know, and I'm so happy to see you again. Last time I saw you was maybe in a different country. So I am here with Mr. Dewey, and we are gonna to talk to you today just about Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin, exploring the state culture and the opportunities in Wisconsin. So uh, we often have these live sessions once every few months. And we did this when the pandemic started so we could connect with people. And we use these times to present special topics. And sometimes we talk about our school's academics. Sometimes we talk about the programs that we have, extracurriculars or sports. And uh, sometimes we talk about special programs like summer camp. If you would like to see some of those programs, they are all recorded and you can find them on our website. You can email us too and we'll direct you to them. So my name is Mrs. Liver, as a lot of you know, and I am the International Admissions Director at Wisconsin Lutheran High School. I started working at Wisconsin Lutheran High School in 2017, but I've been doing international student work for almost 20 years. I lived in Taiwan for nine years in Taipei, Taiwan. So I had the wonderful opportunity to live in a different country, to learn a new culture, learn a new language. And I use a lot of what I learned in the work I do with students here at Wisconsin Lutheran High School. All right, well, I'll introduce myself next. Uh, my name is Eric Dewey, and I am the director of the international program here at Wisconsin Lutheran High School. I've been here at this high school for six years, and um, I'm, I'm actually from Wisconsin originally. Uh, I've lived most of my life in Wisconsin, and although I, like Mrs. Lyra, have spent some time living abroad, I, I lived in Thailand for five years, um, working and um, doing my master's degree there, I also lived um, for, a, for about half a year in Costa Rica, um, studying there as well. So a few different international experiences. Um, and, and I love um, working with the international students and their families, um, helping them get all the information they need, need and then um, feel really comfortable when, when they're here. So it's a pleasure uh, that many of you new students especially are joining us today. And without further ado, I will introduce our um, guest expert speaker for today, Mr. Mark Moldenhauer. Um, he has um, been teaching English and history at the high school, and he also serves as a, a baseball coach. Um, Mark, do you want to say anything about uh, a little bit about um, yourself or your Wisconsin experience, uh, how long you've been living in Wisconsin? Sure. I was, I was born and raised in Wisconsin, and uh, I've had I've been teaching at Wisconsin Lutheran for four years now, but prior to that, I taught in many other places, including Arizona on the Apache Native American Reservation. Um, I've taught in uh, urban Milwaukee and a lot of other places too. I really, really enjoy working with um, diverse cultures, and that's something that really I have a passion for. Also in history, I teach world history and AP U.S. history, so I'm really excited about. Um, you know, getting different perspectives and about America and other cultures in the world. And that's what I really like to focus on teaching. So I'm excited to be here today, too. We often hear uh, from students that Mr. Moldenhauer is, is one of their favorites as a teacher. So uh, students, you can get excited. Maybe you'll have Mr. Moldenhauer in the future as a teacher as well. Okay, so back to me. Um, Wisconsin Lutheran High School is over 100 years old. We have over 800 students. We are one of the best schools in Wisconsin. We're very proud to say we are rated number three for the top Christian schools in Wisconsin. We are rating as A and we are private. 
we have boarding, but we also have day students, mostly day students, but we have about 8% uh, uh, students boarding. Uh, some of them are international. Most of them on the boarding program are international, but we also have American students in our dormitory called Honey Creek Hall. So in our community, you can see some pictures on the screen. We have a lovely community. It is a kind of traditional American suburb type neighborhood that you've probably seen in movies and families live in our neighborhood. We also have a lot of places around our school that are really fun to go to because we're a little bit in the city, but also in the suburbs. So we're kind of best of both worlds. We have a Starbucks right next to our school, which is amazing and students and teachers to use that Starbucks a lot. Uh, and we have a large grocery store, which is right next to the Honey Creek called Dormitory. And many students that live in our dormitory like to go there and buy snacks. We have a very uh, nice modern hospital, very close. It's actually the, the study hospital for nurses, doctors in our state of Wisconsin. And of course, other, other things to do. We have a beautiful park across the street. And our dormitory right now is undergoing a building project. We're putting a basketball court, outdoor basketball court right next to our dormitory. And so that's an exciting thing. Our community is very safe. We don't have any crime. We are uh, a place where you can go out at night and walk. Although, you know, we also are careful when we walk at night, but and we obey our dormitory rules, but we can walk around on our own, take nice walks or runs, jogs, things like that. So we are located in the state of Wisconsin, as we said, and the, we are in the biggest city, Milwaukee, which is about an hour and a half from Chicago. And we are on Lake Michigan. And we're gonna just talk to you a little bit in this presentation about what the life is like in Wisconsin, places that you can visit and what some of what the culture you can expect if you're coming here or if you're thinking about coming here. A lot of you, um, before you applied to Wisconsin Lutheran High School or um, maybe your families had said, Wisconsin, what, where's that? <laughs> so we wanna give you a, a great idea of, of where we are and who we are as a, as a state. Um, so here's just some basic facts for you on the screen. Um, population and size wise, it puts us right in the middle of the United States in terms of um, how big we are, both in, in population and size. So we're the 20th biggest state out of 50 states, um, 5.9 million people live in Wisconsin. And um, the size, I know it's, it's hard to understand square miles, but uh, I, did, uh, I did the math and it, we are about, about two times the size of South Korea uh, in terms of how big we are. So, um, but you can imagine that South Korea has many, many more people um, in, in the, the nation than we have in the state of Wisconsin. So our population density is, is much lower than uh, a country like South Korea. Um, like Mrs. Lyra said, uh, the largest city in our state is Milwaukee, and that's where we're located. Um, but we're not the capital city. The capital city is about uh, about 80 minutes west of us. Uh, the capital city is Madison, and that's that kind of the, the home and the headquarters of the government and um, uh, the flagship university, university as well. So we're really nicely located both towards the capital city of Madison, as well as the big city of Chicago, um, which is the third biggest city in the USA. Um, thinking about um, where we're located, uh, our state and the states around it, we call that area the Midwest. Um, and the Midwestern people are known, generally speaking, as being um, reasonable, very friendly, easygoing people, not so busy and demanding, um, but relaxed, um, outgoing. Um, there is a, a large diversity within the Midwest um, because you have. Um, some really wonderful 
cities, just like uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, bigger cities, but you also have um, uh, an agricultural or rural experience, beautiful forest, um, nature. So it's, it's a very large, wide range of geography as well as people. Um, and the, one of the benefits of being in our area is that there is a lower cost of living and um, also a lower cost of education. So um, it, it's more reasonable than maybe on the West Coast or the East Coast. And that's just a, an added advantage to being in the, the center of the USA. Uh, speaking a little bit more about the education, um, the, the schools um, at all levels, um, primary, secondary, higher ed, are known um, for their strength in the Midwest. And uh, Wisconsin in particular has uh, some very strong schools. Um, you can see the logos on your screen of just a few schools. Um, university of Wisconsin-Madison is a public university um, in, in Madison, the capital city, one of the top universities in the USA. Um, you can also see the emblem of MSOE, that's Milwaukee School of Engineering. That's about 10 minutes from our, our high school and it is ranked in the top 10 nationally for its engineering program. And um, Marquette University is the other emblem you see that takes you about um, seven minutes from our high school to get there. They're also a top 100 university in the USA. So some really great education options. Um, some famous people have been educated in the United, or in, in Wisconsin, and I just have a few examples on the screen here. Um, Satya Nadella, um, have you heard of him? He is the CEO of Microsoft. Um, he was born in India, came as an international student to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee back in the 1990s. And he got his uh, master's degree at UW-Milwaukee. UW and now, now he's got uh, one of the most powerful positions in the world as a CEO of such a um, important business. Um, the president, uh, the vice president, Dick Cheney, back in the early 2000s, um, he went to university at um, University of Wisconsin-Madison. And um, last but not least, um, one of the most famous um, NFL players, uh, offensive guard, uh, Kevin Zeitler, um, went not only to UW-Madison for, um, for his university experience, but he is one of our own at Wisconsin Lutheran High School. Um, he, he grew up here in, in the Milwaukee area, went to uh, Wisco, and uh, continues to be really well connected to our high school these days. In fact, uh, he and his family are uh, major um, uh, donors and, and um, uh, funders for uh, a new out, outdoor athletic complex that our school is designing right now. Um, so currently our, our outdoor track um, is being dug up and we're going to have a brand new beautiful outdoor uh, athletic field uh, by the time that you new students arrive in the fall. Um, speaking of other universities um, in the area, well there is Wisconsin Lutheran College, uh, just about a 10 minute walk from our high school and uh, some of our top students, uh, maybe in grade 11 or grade 12, will actually go to the university for one or even more of their classes during the daytime. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for students to get experience to sit uh, in a university classroom with university um, peers and uh, uh, strong professors with their PhD. Um, and it looks really great on the students' uh, resume as they are applying for universities if they've already taken some university classes. Um, I will also say that Wisconsin and, and Milwaukee in particular is the home of a lot of strong businesses. And this is a great opportunity to stay in the state um, or to make good business connections while you're a student. Um, there are many um, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies um, really um, within, within easy driving distance from our high school. Um, uh, so for example, maybe you've heard of Foxconn, it's, uh, it's Taiwanese based or Kom Komatsu Mining, that's a, a Japanese based. Um, they uh, have international headquarters right here in Milwaukee.
So Milwaukee has a lot of really uh, wonderful cultural uh, uh, activities that go on in our city. And so if you're interested in the orchestra, you can go to the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra, the Milwaukee Ballet Company, and the Broadway Theater Center. We also have some amazing museums. The Harley Davidson Motorcycle Museum, because Harley Davidson is, uh, is a Milwaukee company and it is now worldwide. When I visit China and or Taiwan or other places, sometimes I'm in malls and I see Harley Davidson stores. And I think that's cool because that company is from Milwaukee. Then we have a very beautiful harbor uh, because we are on this beautiful Lake Michigan and Milwaukee has taken advantage of that by putting some very world-class museums on the lakeside. So not only are you visiting a very interesting science museum called Discovery World, but you're also able to walk along the lakeshore and enjoy the views. And also you see the picture below of the the um, Milwaukee War Memorial. And that also is a, a beautiful place to go and visit to see the uh, lakeside and visit a interesting museum. We are a Northern state. So we have four distinct seasons. Right now is Spring. And if you live in a place where your trees and die in the winter because it's the winter time, and then the beginning of spring comes and everything comes alive, you know the feeling of spring fever. And it's a term we use in English that helps us to remember how beautiful the creation is when the trees are blooming, the flowers are blooming, everything is turning green. And right now we are really enjoying beautiful weather. We have 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside today and lots of sunshine. Summertime is also a beautiful season. We don't have the insufferably hot, humid weather some of you might be used to in your countries. So we spend a lot of time outside enjoying our lakes, our forests, hiking, playing sports, it's really beautiful. And fall is another beautiful season. You will be able to experience that if you're going to a ton Wisco, you will see the leaves changing and the beautiful colors of fall. Winter has its own charm because we enjoy winter sports. Uh, we see beautiful white snow. And of course, even though it's cold, we have indoor heating and a lot of our uh, activities that we do and the buildings in Northern climates will be built for winter months. And so it's comfortable. There are many things to do inside the inside that you can still get exercise and enjoy, enjoy good health. Of course, we all love food, at least I do. And Milwaukee has a really interesting culture of food. It's got local foods that are unique to the city. And actually, if you go places in the USA and you mention Wisconsin, Probably they, people will all over the USA will think about these things when they think of Wisconsin. Uh, one of them especially is cheese because we are a dairy state. We have many out, out in our um, outer areas of the state, many, many dairy farms. If you drive around, you will see lots of those. And so cheese, Wisconsin cheese is known throughout the country. You might visit places and they might advertise they have Wisconsin cheese. Beer is big. In Milwaukee, we have a lot of German heritage here. A lot of German immigrants came in the 1800s to Milwaukee. And Miller beer is probably one of the world's most famous beers and their uh, main brewing companies here in Milwaukee. Many of you, if you visit Wisconsin, will eat the delicious frosty ice cream style treat called frozen custard. And this is a, um, a similar to ice cream, but actually better. And of course, because of our German heritage, we have some other kind of German uh, sausages that are, Usinger Sausage is a famous company for sausages and you can go downtown. And in the summertime, you can eat a lot of bratwurst sausages and things like that. Fish fries, we grow cherries and cranberries and 
the worldwide famous product of ginseng is grown in Wisconsin. Next thing I would like to show you is uh, just some views of some of the other cities outside of Wisconsin or outside of uh, Milwaukee that you might be able to get familiar with. And some of you are joining our um, three week English Excellence Summer Camp in the second half of July. So this will be a preview of some of the, the awesome places that you'll see while you're there. Um, we will go to Madison. And uh, as you can see in the pictures, they have, uh, like I mentioned before, the flagship university, um, one, of the, one of the best in the nation. Um, great, great culture in, in Madison. Um, I was there last month um, and we took some students, our, our senior students on a, a seminar there. We toured the university. We walked down State Street. I felt like I was in um, San Francisco, the number of people that were just walking around, hanging outside in the beautiful weather, eating at the great restaurants. So really great culture there. And then you can see the, um, the Capitol building as well, <clears throat> which is um, one of the most beautiful Capitol buildings in all of the United States. Um, we have the city of Wisconsin Dells, and this city is known um, nationally as a famous water tourism city. So there are some wonderful activities that can be done. Um, and people come from all over the United States to Wisconsin Dells, especially in the summertime. It's famous for its outdoor and indoor water parks, its boat tours. Um, it has a lot of amusement parks and um, just a city built on, on tourism and taking advantage of the, the lakes and the rivers in the area. And so students, uh, if you're coming for the summer camp, you will get to go to a, a water park in Wisconsin Dells. And last but not least, Chicago, as Mrs. Lyra said, we're, it's just a, an hour and a half south of us, um, the third biggest city in the USA, um, well known with, um, uh, you know, it, it's a worldwide known city, um, famous uh, sports teams, um, some really tall buildings, um, the Willis Tower is a lot of fun. Um, Mrs. Lyra went there recently and she, she says the, the interactive museum at the base of the Willis Tower is just phenomenal. We'll do that on our summer camp. Um, and um, this year we took our grade 11 junior students um, on a weekend trip to um, Chicago. So if you're coming next year as a grade 11 student, that might be something that you, you will get to enjoy a, a day um, spending in Chicago, seeing all the sites, eating their wonderful deep dish pizza that they're famous for as well. All right. We'll move on and uh, now we want to bring back uh, Mr. Moldenhauer, our featured guest. To, and he's gonna talk uh, specifically about um, our culture of uh, sports, outdoor opportunities and the diverse cultures and how we celebrate them here in Wisconsin. Hi there. Well, first of all, I'm gonna apologize in case there's any background noise here of beautiful steel pan music. Here at Wisconsin Lutheran, we're, uh, rehearsing a lot of our band and instrumental and choir groups are rehearsing for a big end of the year concert that we do at Wisconsin Lutheran and uh, it sounds like a few doors down from me in the gymnasium they're practicing for the steel pan concert which a lot of students are involved in really cool thing we are one of the only uh, high schools in the United States that has a steel pan group uh, and I know some international students play in the steel pan as well as the steel pan group as well. It's something that everybody can get involved in. So if you do hear that, that's what's going on. Um, but I'm going to talk about professional sports in Milwaukee. I'm a very big sports fan and I really take advantage and enjoy a lot of these things. And I know a lot of our international students are able to, if you enjoy sports, you're going to have opportunities to take on, take in some of these opportunities here in Wisconsin and specifically in Milwaukee. We have a very famous uh, basketball team here in Milwaukee. We just won the championship last year. If any of you follow the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, we have a baseball team here in Milwaukee, a major league baseball team. I'm a big baseball fan, the Milwaukee Brewers. And I know there are some outings that the international group go to that at the baseball stadium, a little, a city about 90 minutes away from Milwaukee is home to our uh, American football team the Green Bay Packers. Uh, we have a hockey team, 
uh, in Milwaukee, the Admirals, and an indoor soccer team as well. Among other things, there's also uh, lots of other different college sports and other things like that available. Uh, this picture is one of my favorite because this is one of my favorite places to be. I actually, in the summertime, I work at this field right here, American Family Field, which is home of the Milwaukee Brewers. And not only is it fun to go to a game, even if you don't understand the game so much, it's really fun to go to a baseball game uh, because it's more than just a game. It's really an experience. Uh, typically at, at the games at American Family Field, normally fans, when they go to the game, they'll ha have a cookout outside before the game. They'll have a party outside before the game and everybody gets involved with that. And when you go in, there's amazing food and fun um, inside. And also the stadium itself is really an architectural um, marvel. It, it has a removable roof. So one of the pictures here, you can see uh, the roof is wide open for a beautiful day, but then if the weather's not good, they can actually close the roof and it'll be closed. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, all, this is a picture of the Milwaukee Bucks stadium called the Pfizer Forum. It's one of the newest stadiums in the entire NBA, National Basketball Association, and we're very proud of the stadium. Not only does it host our Milwaukee Bucks teams, which is, which is the defending champion. Of course, we uh, are not going to be the champions this year. We just got knocked out of the playoffs, but with our very famous player, Giannis Antetokounmpo. But also, it also hosts many, many famous concerts from world-renowned uh, musicians and artists that way. One other thing that I really love in Milwaukee besides sports is taking advantage of the parks. We have one of the best park systems in the United States, really. And there are all kinds of different things that you can do in Milwaukee, because Milwaukee is really unique. Even though it's a big city, it's urban you also are extremely close to a lot of really amazing uh, na nature type situations that you can do right in the city and just outside of it. So I just wanna highlight a few of them that I enjoy. Um, on the top left slide, you can see Milwaukee has a very, very good series of trails and parks right alongside of our large lake that we have in Milwaukee. Lake Michigan is actually the fifth largest lake in the entire world. And uh, they actually call it in the United States, the third coast. We have the, the, the coast of the um, Atlantic Ocean, the coast of the Pacific Ocean. And then we have many, many cities that are located on the Great Lakes, which are uh, so large that you cannot see across them. They're huge lakes. And there are many, many beautiful areas that you can uh, look at and walk by. If you look at the top right picture, that looks like you're in a forest or in the middle of a jungle. Um, however, that's right in Milwaukee. Uh, we have area, this is called the Schlitz Autobahn Nature Preserve. And this is a, a area that you can go hiking in and just it's right next to the lake. It also has forests and ponds, just amazingly beautiful. If you see the area that has the three large domes, that is uh, something Milwaukee is very proud of. These are called the Mitchell Domes and they have, they have different, um, different environments in each dome. There's a desert environment, a rainforest environment, and then like a rotating flower environment that are very beautiful and you can visit those as well. And then uh, a great picture of the mix of nature and city life that you can experience in Milwaukee on the bottom right picture. Um, this is probably one of my favorite things though in Milwaukee is called the river walk. And Milwaukee has a, not only does it have a huge lake, but it also has a river that, that goes through this, the urban part of Milwaukee. And this is just five minutes away from Wisco by car. And you can walk alongside the river. There are, are shops and restaurants and places to uh, just enjoy the, the urban and nature part together. I also love Milwaukee because even though it is not as large of a city as a, as a Chicago, it also has a lot of diversity and a lot of different festivals. Um, some people call Milwaukee a city of festivals. We have festivals to all different types of um, cultures and diversities that it tries to show. And we have an amazing state fair, which is one of the largest in the entire country. So all kinds of things. I can't even show you pictures of all the festivals. I'll, I'll mention a few here on the next one. This is probably our most famous festival is called Summerfest. 
And Summerfest is a two week long festival where um, musicians from all over the world, some of the best musicians in the country and outside of the country come and perform here in Milwaukee. And people from all over the country come to Milwaukee to uh, enjoy the concerts. This one right here is some of our festivals. We have festivals like German Festival, Irish Festival, Mexican Fiesta Festival, Bastille Days, Milwaukee Dragon Boat Festival, um, all different kinds of festivals that uh, take place in Milwaukee at different times of year. Thank you, Mark. That was that was excellent. Um, makes me excited for the festival season here again. Um, we, we thought it would be fun for uh, each of us, uh, me and Mrs. Lyra and, and Mr. Moldenhauer, to give you a couple of suggestions, some of our top picks. Uh, so I'll start. Uh, I love my, my family and I love to go hiking all the time. And like Mrs. Lyra says, there is um, something different every season. And the picture you see below uh, is of Havenwood's uh, State Forest. It's a, it's a state forest inside the city limits of Milwaukee. And that's a, one of our favorite places to go hiking, uh, especially in the beautiful fall season when the leaves are changing. The picture on the right, well, I don't always recommend fast food, but if you will have fast food in Wisconsin, I'm gonna recommend Culver's. It is a, a fast food restaurant that was started here in Wisconsin and um, it's becoming bigger and bigger nationally. Um, so you can find uh, Culver's across the United States uh, these days, famous for its uh, butter burgers and the, the kind of custard that Mrs. Lyra was explaining before. And that picture on the bottom, it also shows uh, cheese curds. So it's like fried cheese, uh, very delicious, something you have to try while you're here. So one of the great places to go in Milwaukee is the Milwaukee Public Museum. Uh, it has four levels of amazing history, everything from very ancient history to modern history and also uh, live interactive places like the streets of Milwaukee. You can walk down the streets as if you were in Milwaukee in the 1800s. Uh, there's also a very amazing uh, display of the American Indian uh, culture in Milwaukee uh, in Wisconsin and the Indian tribes that uh, resided and still reside in Wisconsin. And um, one of the great places to go, and I think usually we take our students to this place in the orientation week, is the Milwaukee Public Market. It's kind of like a food court inside of a large building, and it's downtown, but it really exhibits a lot of the foods of Milwaukee, and it's one of my favorite places to go. And I'm going to share a couple of my favorite things to do. I already mentioned it. But American Family Field, where the Milwaukee Brewers play, is definitely something that even if you know nothing about baseball, you have to experience. And I know uh, that's going to be an opportunity that many of you will have if you come to Wisconsin Lutheran. And the second picture is actually when I, I'm a little proud of the picture myself because I took that picture. That's actually my wife and my canoe. Um, we really enjoy uh, taking our canoe or kayak out on the Milwaukee River and Milwaukee, Milwaukee River has a very, very cool urban kayaking situation. It's actually been rated one of the best urban kayaking places, place inside a city, inside a city where you can, uh, where you can kayak. And uh, as restaurants and stuff, you can just pull your boat right up to it and uh, have a have a meal and then hop back on your boat. And there's places you can rent kayaks. It's amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Moldenhauer is a, a teacher and he, he teaches in first period, which is coming up soon. So um, let's do a, a quick, um, before you go, Mr. Moldenhauer, any, any particular questions from the audience um, about um, things that Mr. Moldenhauer talked about today? Um, uh, we'll, we'll open it up to some question time here. Um, we also we also want to um, talk about something that that we heard um, before the the program began to wondering about um, what's the best way to communicate um, to people in our area uh, culturally appropriate ways. Um, I know Mrs. Lyra, you had a few ideas. Maybe um, maybe Mr. Moldenhauer, you have a couple of tips as well. But Mrs. Lyra, do you have some some things you want to share about? communicating in, in culturally appropriate ways as students prepare to come here to Wisconsin? 
So one of the questions I often get when I help students to make a decision to study in the USA is what about my English? Many students are nervous that they won't be able to communicate or they won't understand uh, the polite ways to talk to people in America. And they, they're worried about that. So here's some tips for you. When you're in Wisconsin, you will find people are very friendly. And so if you're walking down the sidewalk or maybe you're in a shopping mall, you people will probably sometimes just say hello to you, strangers that you don't know. They might say, how are you today? They might talk to you a little bit. That's not uncommon. And it's okay to smile and say hello and uh, thank them for, for talking to you. Sometimes you may not understand some things people say to you and it's totally polite to say, I'm learning English. So do you mind um, repeating what you just said? Or could you talk a little slower because I'm learning English? And usually the people in Wisconsin are so polite and they're so friendly and welcoming that they will be happy to do that, especially at our school where we have lots of international students and even some American students that are learning English. And so, especially at school with teachers and your classmates, when you, uh, when you work hard to smile, have good eye contact, look at someone in the eyes, because that's a big part of American culture is that eye contact and a friendly face, then you will get far just by that good body language when you're communicating with people, even if your English isn't perfect. And I'll just add too, as a teacher here at Wisconsin Lutheran who teaches lots of international students, I teach history, but I also teach English. And so I have usually many international students in my classes along with, along, right alongside American students. And it, everything Mrs. Lyra said is very, very true uh, about uh, communication. And I've had many, many international students who are at first a little shy about talking um, in class, but I really try to push my international students as well to, um, to speak in class, to talk to their classmates. And many of my students become more and more outgoing and more and more able to communicate very well as they go through the year. So that's definitely something to uh, continue to work at. All right, thank you, Mr. Moldenhauer. And thank you again for your time. I know you might have to leave here, so, so go ahead uh, when you need to, to to get to your first class, Mr. Moldenhauer. We, we thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll, we'll continue to stay on here though for other questions. I do see a question uh, from, uh, from um, an audience member here. The, the question says, as international students living in the dormitory, when can I go out to play? Uh, that's a great question. So um, I'll, I'll start by answering and maybe Mrs. Lyra will have some um, uh, comments as well. But I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the school day here. The school day goes uh, Monday through Friday, beginning at 745 and ending at 3 p.m. Now, most students at the end of the school day, we, we're, we're hoping that you're also involved in a, a school activity, um, after school activity. Here we call them co-curriculars. Maybe that's a sport or maybe it's a school club like um, robotics or drama club um, or chess team. And sometimes you'll have a, a practice or a, a group meeting at the end of the school day. So um, you'll, you'll hang out at school maybe a little bit after the school day is done, or you'll go back to the dorm um, and take your school bag back to your, your dorm room. And um, there's some open time after school. Um, Dinner is at 5.30, um, so you've got some time in the afternoon potentially to hang out with friends. Um, Mrs. Lyber talked about some of the things that are really close to our campus. Um, for example, the pick and save grocery store or Starbucks, the park across the street. Um, those are things that we consider on campus um, because they're so close. Um, all you need to do is just sign out um, in the dormitory and then you can go to those on-campus places. Um, and then when you come back, you sign back in. That helps the dorm staff to uh, stay connected to where you are so we can always uh, make sure that, that we know where the students are going. Um, there are opportunities too to go off campus. Uh, maybe there's a favorite 
Korean restaurant uh, downtown that you want to go to or a Chinese restaurant or um, go to a, a museum or a park uh, with your friends. Um, we welcome that opportunity. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, talking to the dorm supervisor for um, permission, uh, making sure that, that you have a, a good plan of how you're going to get there, what time you're coming back. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of uh, flexibility, uh, especially on the weekends to, to make plans like that, to enjoy the area around us, as well as um, getting to know the, the city more as well. Mrs. Lyra, do you have anything else you wanna share about that? Uh, no, I think you did a great job explaining that. And you can always write to Mr. Dewey or I individually about your questions anytime. So I'll go on to the next which is do residential students get the opportunity to go to a Brewers game like they did this year, except also this year they went to a Bucks game. So if you just joined, uh, we're talking about the professional sports teams in Milwaukee and the amazing stadiums that are such a cool experience and such a big part of American culture. Our students every year in our dormitory will all go together to the Milwaukee Bucks basketball game. Even if you don't like to watch a basketball game, this is an experience. There are so many cool restaurants and fun food and shops and lots of amazing technology that you can look at in this stadium. And we do that every year. Uh, sometimes students will go to a baseball game. Remember, sports are seasonal in the USA. So the baseball season is generally summertime, but right now in the springtime, the baseball season has begun. And so there are uh, opportunities to go to baseball games. And we don't always do a group activity to the baseball field, but sometimes students will ask their American student mentor if they could go together to a baseball game. And so some students have done it with friends at school or with their American student mentor. Also in the summertime, we do have that three week English camp and some of the students here on this video today are attending that. They do go to the baseball game for that. And you know, there's other things that take place at that stadium. Uh, our foods group, our foods class will go to that stadium in the winter time to study uh, food and hospitality because they get thousands of people going to those stadiums. So the food industry and the hospitality industry is very large in that stadium. So I know our foods class at Wisco takes a field trip to that stadium to learn about large food production and managing large restaurants and things like that for students who are interested in that. And so there are opportunities to go. And, you know, baseball games can be very long and sometimes some people think they're boring, but I think it's a great experience to at least try once. If you like to really study the game and the, the strategy, then you will love it. And I'll say too that um, one of the benefits of coming to a school like ours is that we have sports teams that are part of our school as well. So of course, it's really, really fun to go to uh, the professional games. They're playing at such a high level. Like Mrs. Lyra said, there's a lot of fun technology entertainment inside um, the game as well. Um, but our school has a baseball team. Our school has a basketball team and a football team. And it's really great to, to go to those games as well. Of course, they're not playing at quite as high of a level, but um, our, our basketball team is one of the best in the state. Our, our baseball team is um, uh, top of the conference this year. So they're a lot of fun. You get to watch your friends, your classmates uh, playing these games as well. And, and uh, it's free um, when you go to a home game. So um, that's a, another great way to um, experience local culture, get to get to be part of our school culture as well. For instance, today in the afternoon is a large track meet. It's our conference track meet for junior varsity. So it's one of our teams. And I will go to that uh, today because I'm going to watch one of our Chinese boys who is on the cross country team. He, he runs on the cross country team and also on the track team, long distance. And so that is a, a really cool experience to see your classmates 
involved in some of these activities, be able to cheer them on and, and experience that in our, just in our school. And you probably understood that sports is a big part of American culture. So don't be surprised when you uh, see that people, some people are very into sports when you come to the USA. And I see another question that we missed is if um, your roommate, so because we do have a lot of new students that are coming on this Zoom call, one of our students asked if an international student will have a roommate from the same country or a different country. And we do have, um, our dormitory has suites. So that means there will be three bedrooms in one small apartment style room. And then in each bedroom, two students sleep. And that bedroom that you have with your roommate, your one roommate, will not be a student from your own country. And But there are six people that live in one suite because there's three bedrooms. And so you might have a student that is from your own country living in that suite. But you will have the exposure to the whole dormitory community. Your bedroom is just an area where you sleep. There's so much going on outside of the bedrooms, outside of the suites um, for socializing, for dinner time, that you will be experiencing uh, the ability to interact with people from, from the whole dormitory. And I think that's one of the best things as you prepare to come here is you start thinking about getting out of your comfort zone and interacting with people that are from different cultures and don't speak your native language. It isn't always easy to do that, but it is the probably one of the most important things to be brave and to go outside of that comfort zone and make those friends with people outside of your own culture. Because in the long run, you will be more successful at integrating into the school community if you, if you do that. So all of these things we're saying today are things that are available to you. Um, and some students take advantage of them and they actively seek out experiencing the new things in the US culture that we've talked about. Other students sometimes might get shy and stay in their room a lot. And it's important that you really try hard to, to take advantage of this opportunity that you're being given now. Yeah, this, this year um, in Honey Creek Hall, the dormitory, I believe we had as many as uh, 20 different countries represented, um, uh, approximately 20 different countries. So um, what, an, what an awesome opportunity, like a little United Nations to, to meet people from so many different countries um, so much diversity. Um, really, we're, we're proud that we can present that opportunity to you. Um, there was another question about um, uh, during the summer camp, uh, as many of you know, during the school year, you will have an American mentor. Um, that's a one-on-one -on -one pairing, very, very uh, specifically picked as a, a match for you based on interests. Um, and grade level, um, a lot of factors go into making placements. The question is, how about the summer camp? Is there uh, American mentors in, in that program as well? Uh, we have a WISCO, we call it WISCO Friends program during the summer camp. It's a little bit different, but it's, it's a similar idea um, for every afternoon field trip and weekend activity. We will bring our American high school students, uh, some of them, into those activities so that you are interacting not only with um, the international students, but you're also making American friends as well. And so for those of you who are coming for the summer camp, that is a wonderful way for you to build some American high school friendships before the beginning of the school year that you'll, you'll, you'll um, you know, be that much more confident about um, going through the, the school um, because you already know some uh, some great American friends as well. So um, we're we're currently making um, um, and and both the the school year um, mentor program as well as the um, summer camp Wisco friends program. These are students who apply. They really want to to make international friends. So you have people who will, will be very curious about your culture um, and interested in sharing their American culture with you as well. 
And somebody asked, are the sports event at Wisco during school time or after? So school begins at about quarter to eight and ends at three o'clock. And many of the sports events that I'm talking about occur either after school or in the evening. And some of them are played at our school and some of them are when our teams travel to another school to play. And so the, for instance, in the fall, the first season you'll come to, there will be American football games. And actually American football games are usually on Friday nights. So often students will go and, and experience the American football game on Friday night when our team plays um, other schools' football teams. The, as the winter comes, the indoor sports season starts and basketball, our school's basketball teams, both boys and girls, will begin to have their basketball games in our large gymnasium. And those are amazing experience. We have cheerleaders and dance team and um, many students love to go and cheer their the Wisco basketball teams and be with their friends. They're very loud, so be prepared for a lot of noise when you go to those games. So I think that answers your question. Um, depending on the sport and the season, the games are usually after school or in the evening or weekends sometimes. And, and sometimes, um, like um, right now in the, the springtime, uh, the, maybe the, the, the softball or the baseball team or the track team has to leave a little bit early. Maybe they miss um, the, the period, like the last period or the last two periods of the school day because they have to get changed and, and uh, take a transportation. So um, sometimes, sometimes you might miss the, the last class because you're on a sports team and you're getting ready to go. Any, any uh, last opportunity for questions, um, you can um, put them in the chat box or, or uh, just step up on the video and, and ask. I think this has been a, a wonderful um, live session. With, we're so happy that so many of you joined today. So many of our new students uh, were really excited to to see your interest in this topic and all of the, the great questions that you've had. Um, um, of course, you can always check out our website, wlhs.org slash international. Um, and that will give you great information about our school programs. Um, if you haven't been on our virtual tour to walk through the hallways of our school building, our school dormitory, we recommend that as well. You can find that at wlhs.org slash virtual tour. Um, get, in, get in touch with me or Mrs. Lyrer by contacting us by email. Um, both of us can be reached by the, the general international at wlhs.org email address. And this is our last live for the 21-22 the school year. Uh, we will refresh next year with a new set of, of programs. Um, for those of you um, who are new students uh, for this next school year, we are going to plan a summer session uh, for you and your families as well to give you more information of how best to prepare for um, coming to Wisconsin Lutheran High School. So stay tuned. We will set the date for that and we'll communicate by email about that as well. Thank you so much for joining. Um, it was fun. Um, we're very thankful again to Mr. Moldenhauer for his expert advice. And um, we hope all of you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.